Stella, Stella, or I guess it would be Moira, Moira. What's up, everybody? This is your old pal, Nerdity Absurdity, today coming at you with another action figure review slash versus. That's right. It's a hybrid episode. Why? Because we're talking about a brand new figure, so he deserves a little bit of attention on his own. But uh, also, there's other figures to compare him to, some older figures. So, of course, we're talking about Beast today. We're talking about the uh, OG, the Caliban Wave Beast over here. And, of course, we have Retro Carded Grey Beast, or as I like to call him, Smiling Beast, Dapper Beast. And, of course, the star of our show today is the brand new, brand spanking new, Mr. Lab Coat Wearing Retro Carded Beast. So this is what our Lab Coat Wearing Beast comes in. Uh, it's very nice. It's this lovely uh, see-through. You can see the figure in the package kind of deal and again it's a beautiful work of art we got the rendering of beast on the side there and he looks lovely he looks right out of the animated series and the logo on the side just to compare it to that uh original retro carded gray beast uh not original but the retro carded gray beast that did come before him uh yeah that's that's what it looks like and you can see i have another figure there in the package i actually got him because i was gonna paint him up all blue because i didn't want to spend uh, you know, $100, which is what Caliban is going for often on the aftermarket right now, for a blue beast. I was just going to paint my own beast. And I don't completely have to do that now, because I do have two blue beasts. But, well, we'll see. All of the beasts come with these kind of hands. Uh, they're four different hands, which I'm okay with, because I like a little bit of asymmetry in my figures. It'd be cool if you came with two fists. You can have a fist on either side. But whatever, variety is nice, too. At least we're getting uh, four different hands there. So here's your book holding hand, which doesn't really matter for that guy, because he doesn't come with a book. But we'll see what that looks like. Here's another hand. I think that one can hold the book as well. Here's your handstand hand. If you get your beast into a handstand position. I haven't, but many people have. And there's your classic fist hand. All of the beasts come with these hands. So Caliban, no painted fingernails, but does have on the figure and uh, across the hand too. Uh, the hairier patches have a darker shade of blue. So that's a nice contrast there. Where your blue beast... Uh, he pretty much has one tone of blue. The hair is, is a bit different blue. You can see on the figure here, the hair is a bit of a darker shade of blue than the rest of the skin, but going back to the hands, no shading there. Does have most of the nails painted. Uh, one of the hands on my figure does not have a painted nail. Uh, this is on me. There's also a little spottage there. That's on me for not catching that. It is in the clear plastic packaging. There was only a couple of these figures left from the seller. It was at a convention. I was rushing a little bit, wanted to make sure I got it, and uh, honestly, the other figure had a defect on his face, so I wasn't paying too much attention to the hands, but that's on me. But, you know, you can accuse Marvel Legends of a lot of things. Having good paint applications is not one of them. And uh, here we have the uh, Grey Beast hand, and he does have a little bit of... Um, raised edges on the the gray there is different shades of gray going in there you can see there's some darker gray some lighter gray and the painted fingernails as well so again caliban uh you're not getting a lot in terms of accessories you're just getting extra hands there the other two beasts do come with other accessories and we'll take a look at what those are uh right quick here lab coat beast uh is going rimless Looks like they're just clear, clear plastic there. And uh, Grey Beast has black rims all around his glasses. It's the same basic design. It's just uh, one is painted a little bit more and the other is not. Uh, the thing that uh, Retro uh, Grey Beast comes with is this book as well. This is the same book that you're getting with uh, the Doctor Doom retro figure uh you get two of those books the only difference is with the dr doom retro figure is you'll have symbols like occultish like symbols painted on the outside of the book and of course they're uh black and red as opposed to brown with these really nice gold straps and then you have like diagrams and things in there he can hold the book uh i believe this is the hand that holds it you kind of slot the thumb yeah and then he can he can read the book there uh just like that see Reading Beast. Happy Beast. Also, 
uh, let's talk about the different heads that come with these beasts. So these are the three basic heads that come with the beast, the roaring heads. You can see all of them have slightly darker hair on the top. Uh, the gray beast and Caliban have darker textures in the mouth where uh, this is just brighter. It's just got brighter colors overall um, in the mouth. This, uh, this, the whites pop more because there's more contrast. So the eyes and the teeth, they just stand out more. He, he pops more on the shelf that way. But uh, this guy, you can see with the hair, it's, it's, kind, of, uh, it's kind of brushed into the top there. Uh, you can see over just kind of raising those edges, giving that kind of an effect. And he, he's got that on his body hair as well. But the nice thing about Lab Coat Beast and Gray Beast is they also come with these two different heads. There's a reason I call Retro Beast Smiling Beast, because he's got that really happy Hank McCoy smile. That's really nice. Uh, this is, uh, the hair's a little bit different. It's a little bit combed. Maybe he's making an... Uh, appearance in congress or something like that or he's in the lab or something like that but this is just a nice friendly smiling beast head i really like this accessory and then here we have something a lot of people have been clamoring for a neutral beast head you can see the hair is more uh, scruffy it looks it looks more congruous with the uh, roaring head again see the roaring head and that head seem to go together well but if you look at this roaring head and this neutral head, this hair is a different style than this hair. So that's an interesting facet of it. But I do I do like the way um, this head looks a lot. You get the blue in the eyes too that pops out nice. Yeah, that's a very nice head as well. Just kind of a neutral. You can put the glasses on him or you can have it just looking like that. They didn't really paint inside of the eyes. I'm seeing a bit of a sheen or something inside the eyes. But there's not really any pupils or anything like that. So it's neutral, but it's still kind of... I don't know, only white, it still makes him look a little bit sinister. So it's not completely neutral, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, and he's carrying, yeah, these two beakers. One says uh, X-Gene on it, just a little bit of a beaker. And the other is, uh, it's kind of more like a bong. Can I say that on this channel? This is for kids, right? No, it doesn't have that license. But anyway, I hope kids watch that. I hope they get something out of this. But um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It kind of fits in his hand. He doesn't hold it too well. There's the uh, paint defect I was talking about where the nail just didn't get painted. And I just completely missed that. Um, even that nail is not completely painted. So, uh, yeah, Hasbro Marvel Legends paint applications. Uh, leave something to be desired. And the final accessory we get with Lab Coat Beast is, of course, the Lab Coat. It's a nice piece of cloth goods. It's not wired or anything, but you can kind of maneuver it into positions. It does hold its shape pretty well, and you can kind of bunch him around the back. People were saying that this beast is uh, bunchy. He looks kind of bunchy in his coat. I'm okay with that. He's a big, hairy, blue, animalistic guy in terms of his physique. Obviously not in terms of his um, vocabulary or mental acuity. But um, yeah, I don't think he would... I don't think a typical human lab coat would fit him all that well. So I kind of like that it looks like that. I, I actually think it looks fine. I think it looks like it suits the figure quite well. I don't know if this is a reuse or something from another figure. I don't think so. I think this is exclusive just to him, but it's it's a nice looking lab coat and it's I, I do like my my cloth goods. And it's a it's a nice little touch. Is it absolutely necessary for the beast? No, but it's a nice little touch. It's nice you can see it around the back there. And um yeah folks have mentioned before there's a little bit of a little bit of stitching in the pocket there and things like that. So um, it's nice. It's a nice accessory. And here we have the beasts all lined up so you can get a better look at the paint and the sculpts from the front. I really like this sculpt on the beast. Obviously, it's custom buck. Uh, you got even things from a distance. You got the, the muscles in the, the neck there and the hair on the chest. Big and bulky. Nice kind of a big chonk kind of figure. Uh, really like that. Now looking at them around from the back and you can, you can tell kind of what I mean. There's a little bit of, of, uh, darker blue on these raised areas here on this beast, but they're more prominent on this beast. This is definitely a much darker beast. And we turn this beast around and yeah, you can see, and they, they didn't, they kind of skimped out on the back. They didn't do anything on the back where him on the back, they did some stuff. And, uh, this gray beast has some dark gray raised areas as well. And you look around on the back, and um, 
This one you can kind of, I don't know, interestingly enough, I feel like you can see the joints more. Maybe because there's more contrast. He looks kind of like more like a toy from the back. Uh, he's got lighter trunks over here. Kind of move that into better lit position. Yeah, a bit lighter trunks. And he does not have the uh, X-Men belt logo that the other two have. You can see that there. He's got that. And um, this one has that as well. I don't know why they didn't give him a belt. Maybe it was the design of that character, but these both do have slightly different shading on the trunks. Uh, again, bit of a missed opportunity with the, uh, this is a loose belt piece, it'll wiggle on and off, but bit of a missed opportunity uh, not to have the shorts go down to the thigh cut and to that kind of hide that articulation point, but what are you going to do? That's a sculpt a bit closer up, you can see a bit more of the detail, like the detail of course um, in the face we talked about, but then the hair going over the side, same exact sculpt, same exact buck for all of these figures. Uh, really nice, really nice uh, detail work. Uh, the thing that this guy is missing is just a little bit more paint. Again, some raised areas, but not as much as on the other figures. And then you go around there and see more of the back there. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a nice sculpt, a nice furry sculpt. I like it, and just as a point of compare, so looking at Caliban Wave, there he is, same sculpt, but you get a better better sense of the paint detailing. You get some of that detailing on the arms. And then, yeah, that, that darker raised area on, on things like the patch on the top of the hand uh, really does nice. He's got a little bit of that on the feet, too. Yeah, he's got a little bit of raised uh, blue on the, on the top of the feet there. Kind of like Hobbit feet a little bit. Uh, it's not everywhere, but it is in certain areas, and it does make him pop a little bit. And then, looking at Retro in the same line, there he is right there. And then, yeah, raised, just picking out some dark spots from the fur, from the hair. A uh, little bit on the back, not too much. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely the most kind of on this figure because he gets it all over the back as well. So taking a look at the articulation, and yes, it is the same on all figures. They are the exact same buck. There's your attitude, your side to side. Head is on a ball. We'll go up so much, down so much. Not a lot, but you do get a bit of a range of motion there. The shoulders are very nice. They've got this lovely butterfly that goes all the way back. That's lovely. You get a lot of expression out of him there. And you got this shoulder ball that will rotate all the way around. Will uh, go back like yay. Go forward like yay. All the way. He can really swipe at you. Rawr, rawr, beast coming for you. And um, double joints on the elbows. Which I'm not expecting on a big figure like this. Again, a little bit of limited because of the beefiness of the sculpt. But that's a lot of articulation. Also, you got this uh, fur thing. I don't know if that calls attention to the joint when it's exposed, but it does. It does kind of hide it when he's when it's uh, down like that. So that's a nice uh, choice there. You get the uh, bicep swivel. We'll do the three hundred and sixty there. Um, hand is on a peg. We'll peg up and down like so, and we'll of course do the three hundred and sixty. That's just the torso there. It's back and forward. Not a lot on its own, but it works together with this ab crunch to give a lot of range of motion backwards and forwards. And because this is on a ball, this will swivel around, turn around, do the 360. Uh, waist isn't on a swivel. There's no kind of cut. Uh, I guess you don't really need that when you have the torso articulation and the ab crunch. Those two things working together. Nice click with that, too. You feel that. I think it's a little... Um, just because I like clickiness, I'm a fan of clickiness. I want to test this with the other figures too. A little bit more poppy with the click with uh, Caliban Wave as opposed to Retro Wave. I'm having trouble standing up these beasts today. I don't know what it is. Don't know what to tell you. Uh, and him? No, that's a, that's a lot smoother. There's a little bit of a pop. But yeah, I, I don't know. I like clickiness. It's... Uh, Kind of a good sign of articulation for me. It's just it's just also fun to have in hand and to do that. So uh, that we talked about. We uh, the legs. He'll do the splits about so much. That's what he's got going on in the crotch there. 
Uh, he's got the upper thigh cut. Again, it would have been cooler if uh, the paint, that can actually, that can actually spin. You can't do this with all these figures, but that can actually spin right around just on the ball there. That'll do the 360. I don't think I've ever tried to do that before. We're getting something new on camera, but he does have the upper thigh cut. If you're worried about that joint, which I am because of that uh, Mafex Spider-Man figure. Nice double joint in the knee. Again, for a big chonk, to have double joints in the arms and the knees, really happy with that, and he will get a lot of range of motion. Doesn't quite kick himself in the butt, but he kicks, kicks himself in the upper back, because I guess he's kind of monkey-like, he can reach farther than that. Uh, the foot itself will go down so much, he can do en pâté. He can be a ballerina, ballerina beast. Uh, we'll go up a little bit. Uh, there's your, there's your basically level point up a little bit, go down a lot of a ways, and he does have lovely toe articulation, because he's the beast! Toe articulation up and down. That's lovely. One of the things I love so much about this uh, beast mold is that it's super poseable. Uh, we talked about the articulation. Uh, you just, you can get him in all these kinds of different positions. He's so flexible. Uh, he can do all of these kinds of kinds of weird poses and things like that and uh hmm, can he can he superhero pose i think he kind of can yeah he can kind of superhero pose but yeah he's a very very flexible figure for a big chonk he can he can lean back a whole bunch he can look he can he can uh do the exorcist crawl up the stairs if you want him to uh he's just he's a very flexible very poseable figure that looks kind of creepy actually i'm gonna take him out of that pose uh but yeah that's one of the lovely things about this figure is just you can pose the ever loving heck out of him and uh it feels good it doesn't feel like you're gonna break anything or snap anything he is a flexible big chonk He's lovely. He's one of the most flexible big chunks in my collection. Um, so that's a really nice thing about this uh, body mold, about this sculpt. Now, I wanted to test out the articulation with the lab coat, see how it limits it. It's not going to limit the legs at all. It's not really impeding that. But in terms of the... Eh, you know what? It's it's pretty good. I'm not really feeling a lot of resistance. He can still, still bend in everything in there. Um, you know, I guess twisting it around, well, you can actually twist it around quite a bit, might end up, uh, ruining your lab coat if you do that too much, but I mean, you know what, this isn't super impeding what I want to do with the figure, I know this is just kind of a simple test, but, um, you know, you're not really going to see your cuts and things like that, but yeah, he is, you're still able to use those double joints, and yeah, I would say that works together pretty well, and again, you can kind of flare out the the code or or bunch it up or things like that Ooh, look at that you can even that's wow for something without a wire that's nice that's that's a happy find look at him he's blowing in the wind there that's really cool okay quick thought about prices uh so these guys i was all able to get at a reasonable price these two were able to get new him i got used uh, so retro was the cheapest. He was just over $25, about $25. He goes for more now. Uh, it depends. You can, you can find them uh, more expensive. The one in the back I got not in a package. He was used, didn't have the glasses. He was about, he was 15 bucks, uh, when I picked him up and I've seen him at conventions for around them or about $20, $15, $20. You can find him pretty easy. He can go for higher than that, though. Uh, this one was able to get at a convention for $45. Really good for this new figure. Recently, I saw a brand new version of him on Facebook Marketplace for $60. Uh, same convention. There were other places selling him for $60, so I was really lucky. And him used uh not in a package uh but did have all the accessories except for the build a figure piece which again i don't care about thirty dollars for caliban that's amazing i have seen him going for a hundred consistently consistently on facebook marketplace and other places so really good deal there um i wasn't even necessarily going to pick him up but at that price i figured yeah i should pick him up and can do a review so which is the best beast here? All of these figures do something incredibly well. Uh, the one over here, I think the color scheming is great. I think those darker blues, 
uh, make it really pop. He makes it more vibrant. This guy, while he's a brighter blue uh, lab coat beast, he, he doesn't have the same amount of pop because there's not the same amount of contrast. He looks almost more like cell shaded cartoony, not cell shaded, but you know, just flatter colors, definitely flatter. Um, and gray beast is of course gray where traditionally you want your beast to be blue, but he, d he does have, I think my favorite beast head. I just love the personality. I love friendly beast. These guys should have come with that. I don't know why he didn't because this figure was released later. I'm glad he came with two different heads and that, uh, one of them was a new sculpt, but really should have also come with this. And that's a reason why I was gonna I was gonna paint this one or or sell him. But what I'm gonna do now is I I'm, I'm just gonna paint the the extra head, the smiling head, to be a blue color so that I can use that on my blue beasts, um, because these guys don't come with that. Um, and of course, this guy comes with the the lab coat and and everything and the beakers and those are nice accessories. He comes with the book. They both come with the glasses. So. I feel like if you can bind elements from all of these beasts, you'd have a perfect one. Take the head from this one, paint it blue. Um, take those accessories as well. Take the book, because he can hold the book. Um, you take maybe the, keep maybe the vibrancy of this blue. Keep that head, uh, the lab coat, of course, and the beakers, and the painted nails. Add it to some of the color dynamism that's happening in this figure. Maybe keep this brighter blue but add some darker blues darker than the the one they used to shade him add some add some more darker blues so there's a higher contrast really make him pop and i think if you combined all three of these beasts you would have a, a perfect figure i guess if i were to give a ranking it would it would have to be something like um one two three and that's just because blue wins over gray but i mean that smiling beast head is a perfect uh, accessory. I don't know if you can call that an accessory. It's a, it, it's a, it's a perfect other body part. It's an, a, it's a perfect alternate. And I think, yeah, you, yeah. Oh man, Hasbro, so close, so close to giving us a, a, a perfect figure three times. Um, I, I really wish you could have just combined elements of all of these guys into one guy, but, uh, as they are, uh, I am, I am happy with all of these figures. I do like them all. Um, big caveat here is I got this guy for a really good price. Aftermarket right now is insane, and he is often going for a hundred dollars, if not more. Uh, I see him all the time, so uh, that's the big caveat. If you can find them all around the same retro lab coat beast, is the best beast right now. And here is a head swap with our two blue beasts. I gotta say. It's not really working for me. Uh, I find the dark colors in this one just aren't matching the, the blue underneath. Uh, this, one, this one maybe works a little bit better, but again, uh, you get these, these really dark tones and this really bright, bright blue. That's uh, just, it's, it's not really doing it. Just for fun, I have Lab Coat Beast uh, <laughs> with the gray head. And obviously that doesn't match at all, but it is fun. And I think if you painted that the same color, that would actually look really good. And here we have uh, Lab Coat Beast paired up with a couple other blue-tinted X-Men figures. Eh, it goes well with them. And here Blue Beast is paired up next to Walgreens Thing and Animated McFarlane Batman, because why not? Anyway, that's my review of the Beasts. Uh, if you like what you see, remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that in advance. It really helps out the channel. And remember, everybody, to be kind to each other, and I will see you next time. Cheers.